So, so our next speaker uh, is uh, Q1 Lee, and he's going to tell us about catch movie Asians time series. Uh, please take it away. Okay, thank you. And I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Lisa Carboni, Howard Garland, Dong Wen Liu, and uh, Stephen Miller. So, Kesemudi Eisenstein series was first studied by Howard Garland uh, around 2000 or earlier. And this is his picture. And his PhD advisor was uh, Professor Chung. So I thought that uh, it's uh, appropriate to talk about this uh, uh, work. Um, but at the same time, um, I realized that many talks are related to uh, machine learning today. So some of you may ask uh, this question, is there any relevance to machine learning? Um, so uh, I will talk about it um, in the middle of my talk. So because this should be a colloquium style, let me uh, talk about the very basic classical theory. Uh, so this is a picture of Eisenstein. Mm. And um, this is the opinion about Eisenstein by Gauss. So Eisenstein's talent is a one that nature bestows on a few times a century. That's a, quote from the Gauss's um, writing about Eisenstein. So yeah, obviously uh, Gauss thought that Eisenstein is very talented. So to define Eisenstein series we are interested in today, we have to consider the upper, upper half plane of uh, the complex plane and um, we consider Z from the upper half plane and then uh, S is uh, just complex, uh, very, uh, complex number. And then we consider uh, this series. So the, these numbers are um, uh, kind of a uh, scaling factors. So essentially it's a uh, sum over uh, the lattice, two dimensional lattice. Uh, then we are taking the sum of these. So why is the imaginary part of a Z? Okay, that's the uh, Eisenstein series we are interested in. So this series is absolutely convergent if uh, the real part of S is uh, greater than one. And uh, it's called the Real analytic Eisenstein series or non holomorphic Eisenstein series. So, why is it interesting? Uh, before we uh, see that, ah, yeah, yeah, we are seeing the properties of this uh, Eisenstein series. So, we consider SR to Z, then SR to Z uh, acts on the upper half of plane, uh, more generally, uh, SL 2R or GR 2R. The, with the positive determinant will work, uh, will act on the upper half plane. Then um, the Eisenstein series satisfies uh, this uh, identity for all gamma in SL to Z. So that's the special property of um, the Eisenstein series. And this, this means uh, this is an automor uh, automorphic function. So in particular, these two matrices are in SL to Z. So we have um, we have that uh, this uh, Eisenstein series is a periodic. Since it is a periodic, um, this Eisenstein series has um, a free expansion. So if we write uh, free expansion in this way, then we'll get Fourier coefficients, and here are Fourier coefficients. The constant term or a zero th uh, coefficient has Riemann zero functions. 
here, Imanjarak functions. Uh, if you remember the definition of the Eisenstein series, it's not um, totally surprising because it was, it was a sum over z uh, two, so z, by, uh, z times z. And um, the non-constant terms have um, these things. This function is the divisor power um, divides a power uh, sum, and uh, this is a K Besser function. So that's the um, Fourier expansion of the Eisenstein series. So, your um, important thing is that we are seeing this Riemann Zera function and other interesting functions in the Fourier expansion. And the classical theorem. Uh, is this, this series has meromorphic continuation to all S and it is analytic except at S equal to one and S equal to zero. Um, and uh, it also satisfies the functional equation. Okay, that's the classical theorem. Um, then many of you uh, remember uh, these properties somewhere for some functions. Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, these uh, properties are satisfied by the Riemann zeta function. And um, we may use uh, the analytic properties of uh, this Eisenstein series to prove the properties of uh, the Riemann zeta function. Of course, we can study Riemann zeta function separately, but because the Riemann zeta function appears in the constant term of Eisenstein series, uh, we may study or we may deduce these properties of the Riemann zeta function from the properties of Eisenstein series. Okay, uh, that's the uh, very basic case. And then we move on to the Langlands theory. You see the picture of uh, Robert uh, Langlands. And in mathematics, there is a, it's a influential program called the Langlands program or Langlands correspondence. So Langlands uh, proposed a, a series of conjectures. And one of the conjectures is this, that it's very roughly speaking, uh, it says every L function uh, is an automorphic L function. So, it's a very rough, but uh, that's uh, one of the conjectures Langlands uh, proposed. So what does that mean? So if we have an, an arith arithmetic object, then we'll obtain uh, certain data out of uh, the arithmetic object. Here P uh, runs over the set of primes. And out of that data, we'll uh, make an arithmetic L function. And uh, Langlands uh, conjectures that there should be an automorphic form, corresponding or automorphic form. And out of the automorphic form, we'll get certain data, again, um, parameterized by the set of primes, a Twitter uh, P. But this is from the, uh, uh, this is um, analytic data. It's from the eigenvalues of uh, certain operators. And um, out of that, we can form the automorphic L function. And um, the conjecture is that these two uh, must be the same. That's right. So Langlands uh, conjectures that these two data, one is arithmetic data, the other is uh, uh, analytic data, but um, there should be correspondence. That's the conjecture. And here is an example. It's a very well-known example. If we have an elliptic curve, then we'll get um, this arithmetic data given by the number of points over a finite field. So elliptic curve is over Z, then we can consider the mod Z, mod P reduction. And then we just count the number of rational points. Then, uh, AP is calculated by the numbers. 
And from modular form, uh, we calculate uh, these numbers uh, from the Fourier coefficients. Okay, then um, Taniyama Shimura conjecture or Taniyama Shimura phase conjecture and uh, Weiss modularity theorem says, yeah, these two set of data are the same. So it was originally a conjecture, but Andrew Weiss uh, proved it. And as you, many of you know, this leads uh, to a proof of a formal uh, last theorem. So clearly, uh, it is important to study automorphic L functions for um, uh, to study these uh, data sets. So it's not the main topic of uh, my talk, but I uh, felt it's necessary to talk about machine learning um, at least a li little bit. So I have one slide about it. So. Um, So a huge amount of arithmetic data, AP, and then automorphic data are available uh, at this website. It's uh, usually called the LMFDB. And here is the URL. So if you are interested, and I um, uh, really suggest that you visit the website and look around. Uh, you can find out a huge amount of uh, data coming from uh, arithmetic objects and coming from the automorphic forms. Because uh, big data is available, uh, Yang, Yang, Yang Hui He and Thomas Oliver and I apply the machine learning techniques to uh, the set of data. And then we obtained a series of uh, interesting results. So we wrote three papers last year. Uh, again, if you are interested, then yeah, look at these uh, papers. But today, uh, yeah, I'm not talking about it. So this is the only slide about machine learning. Okay, so let us continue. Um, so we have defined or we have seen Eisenstein series in the very basic form. And then we, um, we consider the automorphic L functions. Actually, these two are related. And so uh, the Eisenstein series can be transferred to a group setting. It is a function on the upper half of plane. So actually, uh, we can transfer the fun uh, function uh, to a group. So assume that G is SL2R, then G acts on uh, the upper half of plane transitively. And if we consider the imaginary number, imaginary number I, then the stabilizer is uh, SO2. So that means H is identified by, identified with G mod K. So in this way, this a classical, very basic Eisenstein series um, can be considered a function on this group SL2R. Uh, if that's uh, the case, if once that's done, now um, we know how to generalize an Eisenstein series, uh, but that's not a trivial work, of course not, and Langlands defined Eisenstein series on reductive groups, uh, which are finite, dim finite dimensional Lie groups, and um, studied their properties. In particular, he proved the metamorphic continuation and uh, functional equations. So that's the uh, work of Langlands. And when he studied Eisenstein series on reductive groups, Langlands computed the constant terms of the Eisenstein series and uh, observed that certain automorphic L functions appear in the constant terms. So um, 
uh, after that, um, Shahidi studied the non-constant terms to further investigate the L functions. And all together, uh, they made this method of studying L functions. So Langlands proved the analytic properties of Eisenstein and series. And because um, L functions appear the free coefficient in the free coefficients of Eisenstein series, uh, they could deduce some analytic properties of the L functions out of the uh, properties of Eisenstein series. Uh, this method of studying automorphic L functions is called the Langmans shade method, and it's very powerful and it has many applications. But there is a, a problem with the, uh, all these successes. Uh, the problem is uh, that uh, the Langmans shade method can be applied on your limited list of L functions. So in order to get other uh, applications, um, other highly desirable um, results, uh, we have to extend the list. But um, this uh, limited uh, list uh, is based on the classification of uh, uh, finite dimensional simple Lie algebra, so Lie groups. So uh, the list is, uh, um, is a fixed. For if we just stay within finite dimensional uh, case. So um, for an extension, we need to go beyond the finite dimensional case and we have to think about infinite dimensional case because the classification of a finite dimensional uh, simply algebra is complete. So we really have to go beyond the finite dimensional case. And that's where this Kessin Moody theory uh, comes in. So these are pictures of a cat and Moody. So finite measure simply algebras uh, have been generalized to Kessin Moody algebras in 1968 by Kessin and Moody independently. After that, finite dimensional uh, reductive groups uh, could be generalized to Kessin Moody groups. So for example, this is the thinking diagram of E10. In finite, dimen finite dimensional case, we stop at E8. So now we can add more um, nodes. Then we consider infinite dimensional uh, algebras and groups where um, this um, um uh, algebra studied by Frankel and Fine Fine Gold um, is also infinite dimensional. So then the question is um, because Eisenstein series on reductive groups um, had, had played um, very important roles. Um, we really want to uh, generalize the Eisenstein series to uh, the Kessimudi groups. So Eisenstein series on Kessimudi groups will be called Kessimudi Eisenstein series. That's the title of my talk. So it was uh, 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 initiated by Garland, as I um, mentioned in the beginning, and he studied a fine case the case first because a, a fine case is the um, the simplest generalization of the finite dimensional case where the first uh, class of uh, infinite dimensional uh, Lie algebras. The convergence of the Eisenstein series was proven by Garland uh, probably like a, around 2000, but the paper appeared in 2006. And metamorphic continuation of a minimal parabolic Eisenstein series was, proved, was constructed uh, in, uh, by Garland around 2007. And then function field the analog was studied by uh, Kapranov, Patnik, Braverman and Kastan, and also uh, me and uh, Lombardo. 
and other um, analytic properties, in particular holomorphy of a cuspidal eigenstein series, was uh, proven by Garland, Miller, and Patnick. These uh, results are uh, for affine Cassini groups. For a uh, hyperbolic case, that's the one step further uh, generalization of um, the affine case. So for rank two hyperbolic case, uh, Carboni, Dongwen Liu, and myself um, has, uh, I mean, produced some results. So we we could uh, prove uh, we could prove almost every convergence and holomorphy of a cuspidal Eisenstein series. And we also computed um, degenerate free AV Tecker coefficients. And um, uh, Flieg, Kleinschmidt, and Person, they uh, calculated Fourier coefficients of a general, uh, of Eisenstein series for general Cassini groups. But they assumed the convergence and baromorphic continuation. And um, under that assumption, they computed the Fourier coefficients. And actually, um, the Fourier coefficients are related, or um, um, it's, uh, it, they appear in the study of uh, scattering amplitude of streams. So E8. Um, is um, the finite dimensional case from E9. Uh, these are E9, E10, and E11 are infinite dimensional Cassini uh, groups. And then uh, they computed the free coefficients uh, in relation to the scattering amplitude of strings. Uh, if you are interested in, uh, in the relationship between Eisenstein series and uh, string theory, uh, then uh, you may, of course, uh, look at their paper, like a Klein Schmidt and Person, or Green Miller, Russo, Van Hover. And then I think Green uh, has um, the earlier papers on this uh, subject. Um, okay. Now, um, question, uh, can we generalize uh, convergence and holomorphy of Eisenstein series to general Cassini groups? Uh, because uh, the for special cases, uh, we know the constructions, but for general Cassini groups, uh, we still don't know the convergence, convergence of the series. So the, even the convergence is not an uh, easy problem in this uh, general case. And uh, we could do that, but still uh, we had to assume some interesting conditions for the Cassini groups. Under those assumptions, we could prove some results. But this is uh, the theorem. Um, five uh, uh, people, Carboni, Garland, um, me, and then Liu, Miller. Um, so there are many notations, and I uh, didn't have any intention to, uh, to define all, all these uh, things. Um, so we uh, here, important things are, uh, this. In the classical case, we saw that the um, uh, series is convergent when the real part of S is greater than one. And then it is replaced by this. But it, it, actually, the same thing. Uh, so, so, same condition is indeed. And then uh, we need this uh, property star. That's the uh, special assumption on the Cassini group. Then um, we can prove the Eisenstein series converges uh, absolutely. Okay, and here uh, we have a tit cone uh, can be considered as the replacement of the upper half plane. Okay, then what's the uh, property star? 
Uh, again, this is a technical, but it is about the root system associated with the Casimudi algebra or Casimudi group. So for any non-trivial element in the Vi group, we have an expression of the Vi group element. And this is the condition that the uh, expression is uh, um, not expression is reduced. Uh, uh, so, so the property says every non-trivial W should be written as uh, this way. Here, the point is that alpha minus beta uh, is not a root for any alpha. And, um, v of v, v of v is, um, yeah, probably I will not define it, but this is uh, just a simple thing in the uh, from the root system. Okay, uh, so here uh, our theorem is that under some condition on the root system, uh, the Eisenstein series converges absolutely. And second theorem, it's uh, the theorem by Carboni and uh, my, uh, myself and Liu. Uh, here we considered the cuspidal Eisenstein series. I didn't men mention it um, in the previous slides, but anyway, it's a um, different kind of or uh, of um, Eisenstein series. And under property R D R D stands for rapid decay, um, and then this is uh, the condition on the maximal parabolic subgroup. Under this condition. Uh, we could prove that IGN sign series is actually an entire function. And there are some technical uh, things, but that's uh, what it is, basically. And what's this property RD, the rapid decay? Um, it is about the maximal parabolic subgroup. And um, yeah, it should uh, satisfy uh, some inequality uh, like this. Um, so it is about the um, um, maximal parabolic subgroup and it's about some uh, property of the associated root system again. And under that condition, uh, we could prove uh, that the Eisen sign series is actually, actually an entire function. So for example, uh, for this uh, um, Kessimudi algebra and uh, maximal parabolic subgroup associated with this uh, vertex, um, we have the property rapid decay. But for this uh, thinking diagram, so this is a, um, it doesn't have any name, uh, but it is a hyperbolic. It's a hyperbolic. So probably there is a notation for this uh, thinking diagram, but I don't know the notation. There are about 100 uh, hyperbolic groups. The point is that uh, if we choose a maximal parabolic subgroup associated with this, this vertex, then um, it does not satisfy the property RD. Uh, but if we choose this vertex for our maximal parabolic subgroup, then it satisfies the property RD. And uh, in general, uh, it's not known which uh, maximal parabolic subgroups satisfy the property RD. Uh, it seems I uh, went through the slides quickly, that's so why uh, finish only. So thank you for your attention. Okay, thanks for the for the great talk. So uh, is there any question? Any comment or question? Can I ask a very very vague question, which maybe doesn't even make sense? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> please. If you can make sense out of it. I would be interested. So I don't know whether you uh, attended the talk this morning by Song Yu Lee. He, um, he was talking about an, an F3 model where you get Katsumudi algebras when you sort of a, a string construction where you have a, um, a essentially a K3 manifold and this degenerates. 
and sort of you get these different Kudikov degenerations. And then if you think of this as a physics model or as a string theory model, you find a Katsumudi algebra. Um, and if you um, if you don't do this violent degeneration, but um, some milder degeneration, you get some some standard algebra. So, is there any sense to to connect um, to connect this to to your research, or even oh. I mean, is there a way of reproducing? Sort of in some sense, let's say you have E nine and you throw away the extra root and you go back to E eight. Can you then study what happens sort of to the Eisenstein and um, Katsumudi series? With respect to the Eisenstein D algebra series, in some sense, mm -hmm. I couldn't attend the uh, uh, talk this morning, but uh, it seems that what you described is related to this. So here, the fly uh, fly the Schmidt in person calculated the degenerate free retake coefficient. Um, and then here they consider maximal subgroup. So E9 uh, will have uh, nine vertices. And then basically they, how many? And then they um, erase one of them, say like, like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, one more. Yeah, one more. Yeah. So then of course, uh, this is, is corresponding to the maximum parabolic subgroup. And then the remaining thing is E8. And that, that's uh, one thing. And then here degenerate means um, the um, yeah I, yeah so uh, it's, when they consider some uh, character the character is uh, is zero uh, so yeah basically uh, because I it didn't attend the, the talk and then I just uh, made a guess and then it seems that yeah, what you described is related to this part and then it is uh, related to the uh, competition of uh, scattering, ampli am scattering amplitude of the strings but honestly uh, I don't have much background in string theory so yeah I cannot really uh, tell much of it did it answer your question anyway? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is precisely, of course, what they had. They had the, the affine root in, in the E8, and then sort of you do some geometric operation and, and this removes this root. But uh -huh. sort of what, so can you use something something along these lines to connect? I mean, for example, the theorem you prove, can, can you use a relation of, so, so if you have the simple relation of going from E8 to E9, to, to learn something or to, um, to, to prove some, or, I mean, can can this help in uh, something like this help in, in in proving the theorem that you had, or was this really just? Um, I mean, you showed us the theorem, you didn't show us the proof. Was this? Did, did this use any any techniques, or is this just just some general statement? Or did this make? Can you sort of make contact to, to let's say, the algebra? Uh, the, the theory of Eisenstein series on the algebra is to to say something about the affine case. If you if you can follow through what this extra root is doing, for example. Oh yeah, that's uh, always uh, um, happening in the theory of um, Kissimmee algebras. So E eight is a finite dimensional, and then E nine is a affine case. Um, um, so um, the uh, adding this one vertex, uh, probably you know that the uh, affine Kessimut algebras are like loop algebras. So um, this uh, another vertex gives us uh, um, the like a new variable t. Then if this is finite dimensional uh, Lie algebra, then this uh, additional vertex gives us um, this uh, algebra loop algebra, and then 
um, because this uh, contains uh, the finite dimensional algebra, and then we just have uh, another variable t. So always uh, the relationship between the whole thing, say E9, and then uh, this finite dimensional algebra are important. That's uh, always part of the uh, techniques we are using. And in our uh, theorem, in our result, here uh, we are considering this uh, maximal parabolic subgroup. And then F must be uh, some cusp form on, on this, but this is a finite dimensional. So, yeah, that's right. This is a finite dimensional. So, here again, uh, we are um, using the theory from finite dimensional like, um, automorphic forms and finite dimensional, uh, case of, case of, uh, finite dimensional groups to study uh, more general thing in the infinite dimensional case groups. So that, that's, of course, that happens all the time in the theory. Yeah, thank you. Uh, welcome, nice, very nice question. Great, any more questions? Um, just a quick question. Yep. Yeah, hello. Hi, hi, Kiran. Hi. Thank you very much for, for this beautiful overview. Sorry, I had to step in and out. There's too much craziness going on. Maybe I missed something, but in the last, uh, your last slide, the example versus non-example. Yeah. Was the example supposed to be the affine thinking diagram of G2 or is it of, of something or of F? I mean, I, is there like a, a thinking classification of this or? or that's uh, just for, for all hyperbolic types. Uh -huh. hyperbolic types. Uh, there is a complete uh, classification of the hyperbolic thinking diagram. And, oh, I see. Uh, so I these see. are hyperbolic thinking diagrams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I see. Okay, are, good. Okay. Yeah. So people are using different notations. So it, it's like, um, any, anyway, so yeah, they use different notations. But hyperbolic cases are completely classified. Uh -huh. so this is hyperbolic, and this is also hyperbolic. I see. Yeah, right. Okay. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you.